Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the Asia Grand Finals. This one, a best out of three. The lone Chinese team to be able to enter the tournament. It's LGD versus MUFC. LGD China, not LGD International. MUFC with HYHY standing in. MUFC are undefeated through the group stages, undefeated in the one playoff match they had, which was a best out of one. They took down LGD when these teams clashed earlier in the first match of the group stages. How will this, how will this tournament shake out? We're about to find out before we talk about this match i just want to give one final shout out uh to the asia for sponsoring this event to all their sponsors of course uh chief among them probably e-club malaysia so big thanks to them for supporting asian dota and along those lines congratulations to orange who finished third they lost to mufc in the semifinals but they claim third place they walk home with six thousand dollars as for myth trust they don't actually win any money but a great showing from them so hopefully we'll see more from both of these teams in the future anyway it's time for the grand finals and now welcome to the cast i'm joined here today by none other than liquids bulba hello i i can't wait for this game i know everyone's been waiting for this it's kind of the rematch of the and MUFC is actually going to give LGD their their NA hero, their favorite their favorite hero. I think LG is going to go for Keep for the Light right now and Rubin Assassin, most likely. Nick's Assassin first, Lone Druid second. So it's it's a Silar Lone wrong. Druid. They never play this as an off lane, or even when they do. So nice Silar goes mid on it, but the it's, it's going to be a safe lane. Yeah, I actually think Orange, um, not Orange, actually Myth actually respect banned. Silla bear there versus LGD, and I'm I'm surprised they picked it so early. The Silla bear, I, I I don't think usually they usually take the other support with the, the with the Nyx assassin, but I guess they want the safe reliable. Another reason is that E uh, MEFC actually did pick Lone Druid in the in the group stages versus them, so this could be kind of like a counter pick towards them. They yes. don't want to get Silla bear cheesed again. <laughs> Well, he is a cheesy one. Uh, MEFC, they've played a bit of Tinker this tournament. He's a great way to discourage the Lone Druid push. Uh, and any push lineup in general. Will we see that out of them? HYHY uh, has been known to play that Tinker quite a bit. We've also seen Ohio on it. It's it's one of the... It's a hero that quite a few of the Asian teams... Zenith is another one. The Southeast Asian teams that really enjoy that hero. Uh, we'll have to see where LGD go. They can go for Lone Druid. It doesn't have to be... Uh, a hardcore pushing lineup or anything that's super timing based. Also, it should be noted, LGD is on the dire side, and in these matches with two two teams so evenly matched, it can often come down to that Roshan control. Keeper of the Light stolen out from under them, followed up by the Brewmaster. Yeah, so the Bre the Brewmaster is actually a good hero versus Silla Bear. It just you can you can put the the bear in, up in the air in the team fights. If he has radiance, it's you can just keep him out and. It's just overall good to disable, and it's a really good um, solo mid. And I know that uh, who's, Ohio actually plays a really good Brewmaster, so he's probably going to be playing the mid Brewmaster for uh, MEFC. And Ohio has been like kind of a new player. I, I didn't follow. Oh yeah. I never. I didn't. I didn't know about him in Dota One. I don't know if he had a different name or something like that. But yeah, he was out of nowhere, and he he was he's he's actually really really good. So. Uh, I can't remember who it was who he played for, but he did play for, I think it was another, actually a Malaysian team, maybe it was Invasion Red, but he didn't come entirely out of nowhere, but yeah, he hadn't really had any big performances on a major stage before he joined MUFC, and it's really only over the past month or two, where he's established himself as one of the premier solos in, in Asia. I would even say, I, I think he has a decent chance of beating some of the top Chinese solos, but we're, we're about to find that out, because it'll be most likely Xiao 8 Ladied against him. Now, there have been a handful of games where Ohio doesn't go mid. We almost always see him there, but I have seen him on a safe lane Shadow Fiend. Uh, Brewmaster's definitely a hero he's played before. Uh, I, I almost feel like maybe it could be... Yeah, probably not. So I'm, I'm wondering at this point... He's also played solo mid Rubik, so that's another possibility, but it'll probably be a support for MUFC. The the Gondar pick's actually kind of surprising, too. I, 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 I never thought in most of the scrims and stuff I've seen of LGD or even the matches... They usually don't rank Bounty Hunter that high. It just it it's a hero that can get cut off. But the way that MUSC is gonna play this game is they're gonna have um, they have Rubik and Kodo as their supports. So it's it's it 
there's synergy between them, but you can't really keep a bounty, bounty hunter off, especially if he gets the stealth shield build, which obviously he's going to go. Right, so this bounty hunter is going to get levels no matter what on the offline. There's, a lot there's of not a shadow demon or something like that to keep him off. There's a lot of harassment, but there's not a ton of killing power, unless he eats a bunch of illuminates, which a good bounty hunter player is not going to do. Uh, for for MBFC, they don't really have any damage. That's the one issue. you got to have a way to bring down that bear in the mid-game. Uh, like you mentioned, you can cyclone it, but that's only a temporary measure. Generally, physical damage is what brings it down, and we'll have to see who they go for as DPS. I mentioned Shadow Fiend. I don't really know that he'll fit in well this game because Nyx Assassin, Bounty Hunter, and the Entangle from Lundra, these are three heroes that can really give him fits. Uh, Tinker, I think, still an option for MUFC and something they could look towards. Not really a total answer for Lundra, but you can blind the bear. Obviously, March slows down pushes, so again, it's a hero I would keep my eye on as we enter the second stage of the picks. I don't think they're gonna pick Tinker. They need a they need a hard carry for HYHY right now, so they're gonna be banning all the hard carries that uh, that go onto the late game. So they're gonna ban AM. They're gonna ban Void. They're probably gonna ban Luna next. Possibly. There's no. There actually. There's no Luna picked by both teams. And Luna it could be a good hero for MUFC. So I think that might be that might receive a last ban. And there's... Brewmaster just kind of fits the play style like. Of if they want to go for this early they kind of aggression, which they should, versus a Lone Druid and a Gondar. So both those heroes aren't really going to do anything early on without any levels. One thing that MFC has, what they were doing, really what they did going into the International 2, and then after they changed their roster, got rid of TFG, uh, got rid of one of the other players whose name is escaping me, replaced them with Silvercross? Yeah, uh, yeah, and Silvercross, and Nick. Um, and then they replaced him with Ohio and Ken. Ken's left the team, HYH was standing. But one of the things they used to do a lot is aggressive trilanes and aggressive junglers like Enchantress. I don't know if we'll see it this game, but offlane bounty, we all know he can't really push. Uh, even the lone druid's not a great tower defender against, you know, some sort of offensive trail. Also, one pocket strategy MFC has used, I have no idea if we'll see it, is sometimes they send four heroes to a lane right away. I've seen it at least three or four times for them. Just four heroes in usually the enemy safe lane and just look go for a really early tower uh, push. Usually get two towers and back off and farm. So it's something odd. I don't know if they, that they have the best heroes for it, but just throwing all those random things they have done in the past out there. Yeah, and LGD, as expected, they've been the Luna. So they are going to keep MUFC on a kind of a, a quirky hero, kind of, I guess. They're going to need something else for the late game that isn't oh, really... Oh, yeah, I like this. So, what do you think late. about this Necrolite? I think he's one of the best ways to deal with Lone Druid. I think this is going to be an aggressive Trilion, then, if they pick Necrolite, because that means Necrolite is a really, really strong hero versus other offlaners. Like, if you play the Necrolite versus the Bounty Hunter matchup, Bounty Hunter is going to get levels and whatever, but Necrolite gets complete free farm in a lane. It's not a hero you can really go up and harass just because mm. of the spells. So, Would... that's a good pickup. Would would LGD maybe th nor they very rare well not very rarely but it's infrequent for them to aggressive tri lane would they maybe think about that put Lundra in mid and bounty hunter in the safe lane to try and dodge that? I don't think LGD is a team that would really dodge it in this case. I think they're going to go for the normal setup and I think they're just going to hope to beat the tri lane. And I don't know for sure if it's going to be an aggressive. I mean, this this could be a Kotal, Rubik, and um, Panda tri lane, or it could be a Panda mid and Kotal, Rubik, possibly a Sven in the aggressive. I know that Sven Warcry with Necrolite has a lot of synergy. He's pretty so, good. He's pretty good against Lone Druid and Bounty Hunter because they're mostly physical damage in the mid game. Yeah, so Sven could be a possible pickup. It's going to be more of a three kind of Sven. It's not going to be a farming Sven. It's going to be kind of one that just goes for their early levels and Warcry and just ki tries and keeps the Silver from farming. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen here. It, it depends a lot on MEFC's last pick. And the usual Beastmaster pick by LGD, they would have went either for the Night Stock or the Beastmaster, both of uh, Shawade's signature I, heroes. I really think they prefer the Beastmaster, though. Like, the Night Stalker, they've had some... Wow, Death Prophet. Well, let's let's talk about that one sec. But yeah, the Beastmaster, they really seem to... I, I think they do better with this. The Night Stalker is a bit more reliant on having that powerful nighttime. Sure, the Silence is decent, especially versus here, like, Necrolated doesn't normally rush a BKB. And versus Panda to deny that split. But the Beastmaster lets them push and get those safe towers, especially in combination with the Lone Druid. And I think he's a little bit better at controlling the runes in the early game. So for me... I think the Beastmaster fits LGD better, and what's crazy about it is nobody's ever going to ban this hero against them. Well, not crazy, but a little bit cool about it is nobody's ever going to ban it versus them, at least not that first stage, because there's other more important heroes to get out of the pool, but MUFC respond with a Death Prophet, so it looks like safe lane, Necrolite, Solomon, Death Prophet, and offensive tri-lane. 
Yeah, so really, really uh, predictable lanes from MUSC. And this this is a kind of a cheese kind of push lineup. They're going to be going for the mass heal. With this, this Necrolite's going to be rushing a mech. And this DP is going to go for whatever items. And they're just going to try and push this five. And um, the Lina pickup. So this Lina and NA is a, a quite, a good, quite a good combo. I mean, uh, NA is a hero that does need levels. That's a problem with him. So you can't really aggressive try lane. And he's not that aggressive early. And he has huge mana costs on his spells. So they're going to have to play a bit early, uh, passive. But hopefully we see what Xiaowei did last game. Last time he played this beast, he's going to try and gank the lane. Yeah, we saw him really control the runes well. And it'll be... It's pretty... I mean, Death Prophet can spam or nuke a little bit more than Beastmaster. But then again, Inner Beast kind of counters it. So I think they both have similar pushing potential. It's just going to be a little more dangerous for the Death Prophet to check runes. Uh, you got to worry about the Bounty Hunter wandering on the river in Viz. The smoke ganks for me from LGD, if they ever go for one, are a whole lot scarier. And... Although, although you know, you don't really want to leave your lone druid alone against the trilate. I mean, if you don't have the best killing trilate, it's decent. So, with all that being said, let's introduce the player Shao Eight on the classic. At this point, becoming a classic Beastmaster solo mid is rushing the bottle. DDC defensive trilate for him. Nyx Assassin with the Observer Ward Silar, and getting to the point where maybe you think about renaming lone druid Silar. Uh, perhaps a bit premature on that, but Burning for anyone who didn't know, Burning now has. Uh, his name is a possible flavor name for anti mage, so huge shout out to him. He's definitely earned that. DD on the Lena, and last but not least, we have Yao on the off lane bounty hunter. All the other on, over on the other side, it is that aggressive tri lane. Interesting ward placement from Net. Does see quite a bit of the jungle. Doesn't block any camps though, uh, and he's playing that support keeper. The light lane on the Rubik. Sharky just heading up top, rushing the bottle soul mid. Really aggressive eco build. No tangos even. And Ohio as a brewmaster with an early rain of Basilia, so it does scream offensive trialing like we talked about. HY HY is the safe lane Necrolite. Yep. And do you want me to do uh I did them both. Okay, <laughs> okay sorry. I like yeah, I was looking at all the items. <laughs> That's cool. So uh, Ohio is actually not gonna be playing the mid. I thought he's gonna be taking the Death Prophet. But instead Sharky's gonna be the mid player. So he's actually Sharky's actually going for really um, he's not going for any tango, so he's going to have this bottle a lot uh, earlier, at least. He's going to get a one creep earlier, or two creeps earlier. Ohio actually gets a double damage. Well, I mean, He should probably give this to support. Yeah, I mean, it's always possible that he could take a lot of harassment, though, in trying to rush that bottle. Uh, because they control the rune, they don't have to worry about maybe a first blood attempt mid on Sharky. So he'll get it a little bit faster, but it shouldn't be a big difference. Yeah, and another thing to keep to note that this mana burn is going to do a lot of damage to this Death Prophet. And the Necrolite later on. Uh, Death Prophet's a quite big in, in, intelligence gain. So the other nice thing, just in general, about the Nyx Assassin and the 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 Lina, are they provide you a lot of burst damage, and that's really what you want against Necrolite, who obviously can heal herself up when Exorcism ends. Uh, or oh, HY, HY is trapped on the bottom lane. Wow, he took a lot of damage from Yao. Yao do, doesn't even have that poor man shield to start. I think HY HY just. You know, playing a little too aggressively at level 1. Denied. Maybe should have waited until he hits level 2 or 3 to Denied. really start trading blows, but... Yeah, take you a lot yeah. of harassment. Yeah, I mean... Chinese Dota is... Chinese Dota doesn't pull their... Heroes, Tangos, and Flasks. So... Poor Bounty Hunter has no PMS. <laughs> In spite of that, he's winning this lane so far. HY HY is forced back to the tower. I, I don't know why he actually did that. The thing is, Bounty Hunter dragged the creep, so he's gonna keep it at his tower. But HY HY actually tanked a lot, and then he got stuck in the middle. But the thing about, he's also going for a Heartstopper Aura. I don't know about this. I, I think it'll just be one casual point in it. I'll be very surprised if he levels it up. This is not a good level one. I mean, it doesn't do a whole lot at the early levels, because it's 0.6% of a very small number. Your HP pool is quite low. Uh, normally, those percentage-based abilities, you want to wait until later on in the game to level them up. Bounty Hunters 4 and 5. This Necrolite, normally pretty strong in 1v1s, but... He's getting neutered so far. Top lane, Brewmaster getting a lot. Uh, lone Druid getting very little. And mid lane, Beastmaster dominating again. Shao wait. Just doesn't care about these auto attacks. Just spamming the axes, leveling up the aura. And Death Prophet doesn't really hit quite hard enough to bully him. That Beastmaster with the five base armor. Such a beast in the lane. You see what I did there. <laughs> the thing about uh, Sadis, Sadis is what keeps... Uh, this Necrolite from completely, I mean, it's what helps the Necrolite dominate the Bounty Hunter. But he didn't go it. So if you get the level 2 Sadis at 2, and you can just a few creeps, you can end endlessly spam the Death Pulse. So that's the entire concept. But he went for a Heartstopper, and which is 
And I then, don't know. And the new the new status also gives you HP regen, so it's really helpful to just survive in lane. Yeah, I think this was a misclick or something. I don't know why if anyone would plan to get our stop order this early, but whatever, it's this one level. So oh. regardless, it's gonna be his bounty hunter is gonna get levels, no matter what, and he's gonna get farm. That's what all he needs. So it's gonna be up to Yao to go around ganking. A fresh sentry ward placed inside of the camp. But they can see this one. It's going to be dewarded. I'm honestly surprised they're not just body blocking the camp. That's what we see the Chinese teams usually do in the offensive tri lane. And frankly, I don't think LGD is really going to fight this early on. And it'd be pretty dangerous for them to do so. Uh, but they get the camp dewarded. Actually, I think the hero's body blocked at the last second. And HYHY just getting dominated bottom. I mean, he has a decent CS, but he's running out of region quite quickly. And now the yeah, Brax is actually messaging me right now and saying it's the actual correct build. You're actually supposed to go hard stop where level one, so I have no idea. I have not played Necro lane at all. So it's kind of nice just for that passive harassment, just standing, especially against the melee. If you stand in late, uh, although Yao's yeah, kicking a lot of damage, or HYHY is taking a lot from Yao, I should say. Shout weight's pretty low mid. A lot of heroes just struggling to stay on their lanes at certain points here. The rune's about to spawn. Four minutes in. Shout weight's already level five. Experience is still pretty even on this little main middle lane. Death Prophet is stabilized. She's only a few CS behind. You can see DDC rotating to check the rune. And one thing that LGD does really well is even when they tri lane their lone druid, they still check the runes with the tri lane supports. They don't just sit in the lane. They don't just pull. They make sure to give some support to Xiao 8. And it is a part of how he's been successful as that solo mid Beastmaster. Yeah. So the problem is, I think if the Necrolite, if he wants to do well, which is the bounty hunter, they should have pulled them sentries. But he doesn't have sentries right now. So, uh, the Spaniards are just going to get free roll. It's already up to level 5, and the Necrolite's just hitting 4 soon. Yeah, and it's all the, like, yeah. It seems like it's only going to get worse, too, because once that bounty hunter hits 6, then he just tracks you, and he's going to be able to close the gap and get off multiple auto attacks. We may need to see a TP on one of these supports, or maybe even. I don't know. They can't really lane swap, though. That's the problem. There's not really a plan B for them. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe they could smoke gank mid and try and at least get the Death Prophet rolling, but not even, because pa I guess Panda would be okay here. He's pretty tanky, but it feels like MFC, you know, and this is generally what happens with the aggressive tri -lanes. If they don't go well, you're limited in terms of your fallback options. The Celebre is farming well. I mean, they're not putting that much pressure on top, and they're getting a lot their pills and levels right now, so. The Prophet is level 6, like you said. Beastmaster is going to do his usual routine. He's gonna probably he has a smoke. He's gonna TP, it's, most likely bottom. Yeah, most likely bottom. That's what. But that's if you look at H Y, if you look at H Y, he's hugging the tower, so he expects this. I mean, he's not not gonna go up there. And the thing is, even though he expects this, is the fear of him just sitting there. So this banner is gonna be a full level above him, and he's getting a creep wave right now. So H Y is getting now completely dominated in this lane. He, he's not been able to do anything. He just has to pull the creeps. And to make matters Farming. worse, Lone Druid is out farming the panda now. And th now they start to get the pulls going. You can also already see DD just demolishing some trees here. And the Lone Druid, he's getting pretty close to... Well, not that... I mean, in the next two minutes, he'll be level 6. And then you're really going to struggle to kill him. Sharky wants to get back to that lane. Really there is an Observer up on the hill. On the this will keep Shawit safe against any potential TP ganks. And HYHY does resume farming. I won't be surprised if Yao TP's top either. I mean, although I don't know that they need to. MUC is kind of losing this lane by default. Yeah. The thing is, Panda is going to get his levels and, I mean, at least the farm. The thing is, Siler, like I said, he's going to get the solo experience and the supports are just going to get experience off poles. So, in the end, LG is going to come out on top on this tri lane. The thing is, effectively, they should have won their, uh, their safe lane a lot better, but they're not. Yao is going to play even more aggressive. He's going to have the, the phase boot soon, actually. So... Well, you can see that once Death Pulse gets leveled up, it does hurt quite a bit. And, you know, of course, it's the effective cha you know, change of your relative HPs that really uh, makes it so powerful. Not only damage your opponent, but also healing yourself. Still, he can't really spam it because he's not able to last hit that much. He doesn't have Arcane Boots. Uh, you mentioned the early mech. It does look to be the item build, but I feel like he needs something just to help him stay in lane a bit more. Yeah. And he needs mana to do that. So, the bounty hunter... I mean, the Beastmaster got a haste, so he might be trying to get... He's just going to go around and try and roar mid. <laughs> this is a long way to go. I feel like he could just run head on, but once that extra step or two... Oh, that's why. Waiting for the Nyx. TP in mid. 
This is gonna be probably our first blood. It's a level 8 Death Prophet, but she's squishy. Went for Arcane Boots, couple more auto attacks, and that's the first blood. You can see the Mana Burn, even at level 1, hits quite hard. And LGD just so good about this. Every time Beastmaster hits 6, it's always a kill, but it's a, it's a different way to do it. Normally, it's Shao 8, Smoke Ganking, or just ganking the enemy solo in the safe lane. This time, it's the Nyx Assassin who comes mid. Seeing probably that HYHY is just playing really defensive, good adjustment from them. Yeah, and if you notice, every time Xiaowei goes missing from the map, HY has to play constantly passive in the lane. He can't even go up and get experience just because he's he's just afraid he's going to gain. And Banyan is officially like a full level above him. So this is going to be pretty big. And Yao doesn't even have to move across. Like He can just sit in his lane and farm and get levels. And it, regardless, his team's going to be having an advantage just because he's doing so well in this off lane. And they're winning. Basically, they're winning all their lanes right now. The good news is it's not by an overwhelming margin. It's a thousand goldie, which is definitely significant at this point. Oh, uh, actually, the experience got a lot worse since I last checked. I guess the one saving grace is Panda's not too far off of level six, and maybe with that Brewmaster ult, they can force a fight, start pushing towers. They do. You talked about it as a cheesy lineup. Well, when are they going to start, you know, really using that cheese and grouping up and pushing? They don't have the mech yet. Necrolite actually went power trench just to be a little bit less easy to gank. Uh, but it will delay that mech further. Sharky has the Arcanes. I think they're getting close. Maybe once they have the blink, maybe in like three or four minutes and level six on Panda, they can start going for some towers. Xiaowei just smoked up bottom lane, or invis bottom lane. And this is going to be another solo attack. getting shut down if HYHY doesn't run to the tower now. It's too late already, it looks to be. There is going to be a heal. Not enough, though. He's got six wand charges, pops them, and then still dies. And that's track gold for LGD. Yeah, I love this play by Xiaowei. Just the constant fear of him just missing. And they're going to be going on top. They're going to be going on Ohio. Yo, and he's going to die as well. And that's going to delay his level 6. That's going to further secure this tri lane for LGD. And we have seen a lot of trouble now. Lane forced to retreat away. He'll escape. LGD, will they be able to get this tower bottom? No, not yet. Here's a little bit low on mana. So that's a small saving grace. Also, Sharky did pop his ult mid. And he's really working away at this tower. Coddle's illuminating down the creep wave. And... Nope, Death Prophet ult ends, but they may be able to chip away at this. I think we're going to see a deny if they really force the issue mid. Sharky, most likely going to keep it out of deny range. DDC rotates in mid. Ling wants to throw him up on the cliff, but can't find the angle. And in the end, DDC will retreat to the tower. <laughs> yeah. Just annoying. Once DDC gets his level 6, he can solo gank with um, Xiaowei. And he can actually, it's with another one, one other nuke, he can just kill this Death Prophet. And Lina is going to have level 6 as well, so they're going to have so much burst damage with their heroes. And that's what MBFC, if they die to the burst, they're they're hopeless because they're all about living for a long time. That's what Death Prophet's ult is about, that's what Necrolite as a hero is about, and especially if he's going for mech, he's got to be able to get that off too, so it's a it's like a game-ending problem for them if they consistently get bursted down. Top lane, Yao is just camping out here. Level 9, Ohio's gonna be tracked. He is a full four levels ahead of that panda. And instantly picked off. Meanwhile, simultaneously, another movement mid. They're just picking apart MUFC. Wow, this is some real impressive. It was like simultaneously. It's almost like as soon as MUFC say, oh, we're getting ganked top, need help. Then the gank goes mid, and it's just total, sowing total confusion in the ranks. Yeah. So, shall we? They're going to get mid tower, obviously. And this Kodo is not going to be able to get in range to blast. Don't think. They know he's up there. So, they're going to wait for the creep fire to come in. Yeah, they're going to attack it. And the the two in inner beast is going to make it relatively easy for them to get it. Unless. They still don't have Panda ult, and Yao's here. This could be trouble. <laughs> no, gonna go with the Coddle instead. Just insta gift. And now onto Ohio, who has level 6, but if they can force out that ult, that's great. How many TPs was that? Three TPs, I believe. Or three heroes converging on that lane on top of the Panda who was already there. And what do they accomplish with this? Gonna look to push mid. There's no roar for 20, but the beauty of that roar is it does not have a long cooldown, even at early levels. And the mech, the signature mech coming out. And the best part of all is, once again, it's it's the same pattern, it's the same Dyer's script. Silar just left alone on the safe lane, free farming away up to 2.6k. Another problem with their with their aggressive training is they had no kill potential. They This Rubik, Panda, and Kodal, that's only one disable. And this Panda, that's what, that's obviously the Rubik lift up. And you need the clap. And then the Kodal blast at the end, but LGD is smart enough to not play up. I mean, this Silver is going to be so hard to dive. He's... He has his panda form, he's up to 
close to 3k. And he's going to get his relic sometime soon. The panda is close to his blink, but I'm not sure how much it'll do because there's going to be the mech to counter it. There's high levels on the supports in general. And will he even be able to get that off? You always have to worry about getting tracked and then getting stunned when you try and jump in. And Roar is a great way to kind of counter Panda. Uh, we'll see. This Panda can pretty much be burst down from full HP to nil, even with that blink. So I'm not convinced. It will be a game-changing item, but you never know. MEFC, they're starting to feel the heat a little bit. Grouped up as four top. But as soon as they spot the rotations, they just retreat out, so they're... This is a push lineup that's not pushing. Yeah. And this is actually the problem with them, you see. I mean, if their lanes did not go well, this was what was going to happen. All of LGD's heroes are just able to snowball. I mean, even this Lina. And has his ultimate up. Hey. The supports on MUFC have, like, barely any farm or any levels. As Kodo is what, level 4? As a creature of the flames, I'm pretty sure that Lena would resent that snowball reference there. Forgiveness. <laughs> you, you may pay your respects and perhaps someday she'll forgive you. Forgive me, Lena. <laughs> <laughs> Grovel before her. Alright, top lane, they're pushing in. Siler up to 3.3k. Gotta start working away on the tower soon. That's a, it's a pretty fast relic. Especially when you consider offensive trilanes are designed to shut down the enemy farmer and get kills early. If you're not doing that, then it's it's pretty bad. Also, Yao starting to really tax. How long was it? Look, like the bounty hunter last game. I mean, Myth Trust when they played, it was forever and a day before we actually saw any items come out. Yao's already got so many. Yeah. He's got the drums. I want to say like ten minutes earlier that we saw the bounty last game. Something insane like that. And they're gonna get the. Sather's gonna get the tower. He has his relic, so this is so much farm on him. Like he's gonna have his, the radiance within the next two minutes. This Kodo is just getting annihilated by this NA. Yeah, every time he goes into blast, gets mana burn, loses like half his health, and the relic is up, and the mauling begins. And HYHY desperately trying to farm the mech, but even when he gets it, it's only matching what Shao Eight already has. Normally, when you're on the push, you aim to get your big pushing items before them, not at the same time or later. Link gets caught, tracked up. That's a three, four, maybe five hero track kill. More tracks flying out, and MUFC just cannot get in range to defend the tower because if they do, they get stunned, they die, and they give up a track kill. Looking at the goal lead, it's so much right now. It's going to be close to 10k at. 15 minutes, uh, 16 minutes. So, and Siler is gonna get his radiance on bottom. They're gonna just get Roshan as soon as that's done. This Beastmaster aura with the Silver attacking the tower is so much damage. And it, the and scoreboard is looking almost identical. Is it? It's almost fair to say LGD is playing perfect Dota. The match we saw yeah. against, uh, it was Myth Trust, I believe. Uh, it, it was what, like 23 to 6 at one point, and that was after they got Rax and maybe lost a hero to there. It's, it's it's felt so one-sided the whole way. It's like, where are the weaknesses with this team? The thing is, this is just, this is such a cheesy lineup. Like, they have no disable. They just have one disable on the Zerubic. And then they have the Panda ultimate with the, uh, with the, with the stun on the boulder. That's it. And there's all these heroes and disables on LGD's side. They can't do anything. They're trying to trade, at least. But Lone Druid and Beastmaster with that R are probably going to outpush a Death Prophet. Who's just getting raw HP, and I think this is the correct move. Uh, Death Prophet get, just surviving forever in these team fights. It seems like that's their only chance in hell at, at doing enough damage to actually kill LGD or at least push a tower down. HYHY does have, finally have the mech, so some small signs of life. The blink has been up on the panda, but what are they going to do with this? Are they going to try and commit to a real push? They got to lay down sentry wards wherever they go because of that Nerubian assassin, that next assassin. If they don't, they're probably giving up kills. Let's see, LGD groups up top, Yao leading the way, Ogre Club up, 1200 HP. You compare that to some of these heroes in MBFC, and it's just a, he's like a Goliath to their David. <laughs> yeah, and Siler, I'm waiting for them to actually get Roshan. I don't know that this push is going to come, but they're probably going to wait. Shawite does have a double damage, he's going to have level 11 soon. He's probably going to be going for the Ags, the usual build. This sort of thing just doesn't work against LGD too often. When you just leave a hero aggressively farming a lane like this, they always know. It's I, I don't know if I can even recall a time where LGD's fallen for such for bait like that. And MFC give it up, and they just decide, okay, we'll try pushing this one. So they have the mech at least on HY. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to help that much. I mean, Panda doesn't. Have, he actually has his blink, so he's really under level though. 
I feel and, but Panda doesn't really need levels I, till the core levels. I feel like I'm watching Vulture circle a corpse. Just the, just the way that LGD are moving around, you know. It's like at any moment they're just going to start pecking away, going for some flesh. And, oh, well, here we go. It's the roar on the lane. I'm not sure if that's the area you really want to start on. Maybe not the right way to begin the fight. Lane's still alive. The Death Prophet keeping him healthy, or the Necrolite, rather. But LGD haven't really fully committed to this yet. Now Yao does. He jumps on top of lane. Oh, there you go. Some fiery justice from Lena herself. Yao trying to run away. He's tanky enough to live that early Ochre Club. I think keeping him alive. Now Sharky caught off, isolated, and brought down. Yao. Oh, he will fall. So they get that kill on the Bounty Hunter. But it was an expensive one. Yep. As soon as that happened, there was a kind of a good counter initiate there by uh, Ohio. But they still have no ranged DPS at all. And as Death Prophet dies and then Necrolite dies, they have no, like actual useful heroes to do f any damage in these fights. I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned ranged DPS because Necrolite has to be close to do damage and he's not really a true DPS hero anyway. Uh, he's more of just a sustaining type hero. Even Death Prophet though, the ghosts have a travel time and the way the mechanics work, if you're farther away from your targets, they're not doing as much damage per second as if you're close, but if you're close, you're getting chain stun, you're getting Laguna Blade and you're dying, so they have some potential DPS and technically the ranged heroes, but effectively they have to be in close to do that damage, so it's a really important distinction. And now LGD, like you said, they're going to go for Roche as soon as they win a decent fight. And here we go, right into the pit. Everything going according to plan. And it's going to be close to a... What is that? And they have? Oh, she, she has nothing, but she's usually going to go for a... Or a he. Uh, which yes, DDC. And they, and they usually goes for the pipe in this map. And as soon as they get the pipe... He's still somewhat far, but they're gonna go and break the base. Yeah, last last game they didn't even wait for the pipe. I, they could. I think, I think it's different the this because they need they have a codal this time, so they need the pipe versus the codal. I don't think they're gonna push without the pipe. Well, they don't have the pipe, but they already have a Vlad's up on Beastmaster. Uh, that's just Death Prophet's ult does physical damage, so this is just gonna be additionally useful uh, above what it already does, which is give you that armor just to help your creep wave push into the tower. And they actually have, wow, four melee heroes and the bears, so it's going to benefit them on a real, it's a great item to have a Vlad's, is probably the way to put it. And a Hyperstone about, I assume that'll, that's what we'll see from Silar, and he's almost got it. Yeah. Spamming the ult for the hell of it? Why not? HY is going to go for the point booster, get some stats. And Sharky has the same, he has his uh, soul booster soon, so he's going to have the blood. The thing is, they need to get this panda to level 11. This level one ultimate, considering how farmed Silibear and the the cores on LGDR, the Silibear, the Lone Druid, and the Bounty Hunter, he needs some more DPS on the Baron. And they need to rely on the Panda ultimate to do most of the team fight for them. MFC are grouped up. They're trying to push. They do have a. They have. They're getting a little bit tankier. The Necrolite and the Death Prop are not the easiest heroes to bring down. Yao's coming from behind. That's about to get caught out a little late with the Sentry Ward, but will it be late? Actually, looking like an okay fight so far. Panda jumps in. He gets stunned by the Spike Carapace as he claps. Delayed on releasing the ult. Probably needs to cycle the bear. He'll do so. Good micro so far, but where's the damage? How can they kill anyone off? Sharky's getting focused down. Isolated from his team. Driven backwards and then picked off effectively skewered to death now panda forced to run away the roar held forever now released on hy hy he'll fall too three heroes dead rubik about to be respawn uh, respawning but it's a headlock retreat panda ult used and they get nothing at mefc they know they're beat they tap out and i gotta say this isn't really early at all yeah i mean they knew it was over at this stage there's no way they could have come back I, I hope they were in a better lineup next game i don't know they have their lineup had no disables at all so that was what happened. And they lost their lanes pretty pretty badly. Every lane got lost. Well, 13 to 2. It was really one sided from MUFC, uh, from LGD. It is the best out of three, though, so the good news is how, how deflating would it be if this was the grand finals? I'm glad we have a best out of three for it, but MUFC, they got their work cut out for them. I guess if you're going to lose, losing quickly, probably the way to go, so you don't have to dwell on it or get too frustrated. Uh, and really, like you said, it just came out of the lanes. They lost all three, and that was pretty much it. Top tower is under yep, and as soon as you lose your lanes this hard, it's, you can't you can't win the game. Oh. Tower is under huge gold lead, huge experience lead on both counts for LGD as this game ends. It was a best out of three. We'll be coming back almost momentarily with game number two, so stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. Whoever wins this tournament takes home $15,000. Whoever comes in second takes home 9000 
Uh, a total of $24,000 and prizes available. So it is a pretty significant pool. When we come back, we'll have more action coming your way.